host, Stacey Rausch, Production Coordinator. Today, we're here with Eric Bootsma. He is a Catholic architect living in Richmond and a former parishioner of the Arlington Diocese. Some of our listeners may have heard about a new shrine being built in Gallup, New Mexico, to honor St. Kateri Tecquitha that the Knights of Columbus are spearheading. Eric is the architect on that project. Welcome, Eric. Pleasure to be here today. Great. Um, so first, I guess, can you tell us a little about how you got involved with this project and the different phases of the design and construction? Well, I've been working um, as a Catholic architect now for uh, about five years independently, and I had some friends in uh, who were involved with this project out in New Mexico, uh, actually good friends with the director of uh, vocations out there, a uh, priest by the name of uh, Father Josh Mayer. And um, so they recommended me uh, to to the uh, so the project coordinator, uh, his name is Bill McCarthy. Uh, he runs a, a place called the Southwest Indian Foundation. And so they uh, they wanted to get somebody who was involved uh, with Catholic architecture who definitely understood uh, what they were trying to accomplish here uh, above and beyond just being able to build something that they wanted to build, uh, but also really sort of symbolize uh, the faith that they wanted to do and be able to communicate uh, what they really need to communicate. For those of our listeners who may not know who St. Kateri is, can you tell us a little about her and why the shrine is being built in her honor in New Mexico? So St. Kateri is a patron saint of Native Americans. She was a she was a young woman in upstate New York in the 1600s uh, in the Algonquin and Mohawk tribes. And she was really devoted to her faith that she converted into the Catholic faith. And uh, she took the name of St. Kateri, which is from St. Catherine of Siena. And she really was devoted to, to converting the people who were in, in her tribe. And so she's uh, become a very big uh, Saint Gallup, New Mexico, is home to the, probably one of the largest uh, populations of, of Native Americans in you know, any diocese in the country. It's also one of the, the poorest dioceses in the country. And so St. Kateri is very important that they believe that uh, they ask for her intercession to help with this diocese and help with the, the folks who are out there. They're dedicating this shrine to St. Kateri for the sake of, of evangelizing to uh to the Native Americans in, in the area and really bringing about uh, a lot of awareness of, of what they have out there. Very cool. It sounds like a perfect place for this shrine. Um, what are the different phases of the design and construction that we um, should be looking forward to seeing in the near future? Well, the first phase um, is one that was just announced this last month at the Knights of Columbus Convention. Uh, Carl Anderson, the head knight, um, he had a, a couple of things that they wanted to do, but they announced that they're going to be helping out and building the shrine, at least the first phase, which is uh, a rosary walk, which is focused on all of the different mysteries of the rosary. So uh, the idea is that folks will be able to come out here to uh, this retreat center, which is already there. Uh, so we're building 23 small shrines, and then um, imagine, if you will, sort of laid out on a map uh, a rosary. So there's you know sort of three beads and they heading into the uh, the little centerpiece. Each one of those first beads, quote unquote, is uh, is a little shrine that will have a little piece of artwork that is uh, done by a local native artist there. And then there's a shrine to Our Lady of Guadalupe, which sort of is a centerpiece that kind of the axis. And mm-hmm. so from there, people will be able to walk along a loop that has. Um, a shrine for each of the mysteries of the rosary. So the, you know, the sorrowful mysteries will have a loop, and the, the luminous mysteries will have a loop. And so that's phase one. Phase two, which will come down the line, um, would be to build a museum uh, so that folks can come and uh, learn about all the different Native American saints, uh, both Saint Kateri and then a lot of the, the local saints that they have there, who uh, folks who are both Native American and, and those saints who uh, evangelize the Native Americans. Mm-hmm. And then the final sort of step would be to build a, a small chapel uh, there. And then the fi- final, final one is uh, sort of uh, a long-term uh, goal of building this crucifix there that this, a lot of people got really excited about. But this is a really long-term thing to build, you know, this uh, really tall 150 to 200 foot tall crucifix. Wow. That would really, it would stand on top of the hill and it would really sort of be a beacon so that people could see it yeah. from all around and be able to come and see and and, uh, and see this retreat center and really kind of draw them into it. 
Yeah. It sounds like uh, really to help with, you know, the economy and bring in some tourism almost to, you know, pilgrims coming to visit the site. Right. I, that's definitely the idea is mm-hmm. to do that, you know, and I kind of feel like, uh, you know, the Rosary Walk is, is, is bringing attention to the sort of the plight of people out there. How does being a Catholic influence your designs and your approach to architecture? Well, the first thing uh, that I always look at, I primarily work on churches, and this is kind of a sort of outside the church um church small c uh but it's it's a it's a center for spirituality and devotion too but the church capital c says that um a church is a uh, sign and symbol of heavenly realities and so what we're trying to do is communicate when we're building a church is uh the truths of the faith so when we build a church we build it with a nave and a sanctuary and the sanctuary points to uh the temple of Solomon and the Temple of Solomon, of course, points to the presence of God, mm-hmm. and uh, it points to the fact that the Eucharist is there in the tabernacle, in the in the Mass, and then we celebrate these things. So all of the the parts of the architecture all point towards that truth. You know, we believe in a true presence. We believe that that is are trying to teach with it, but also honor it. We're trying to mm-hmm. honor the fact that God is there and present with us. We honor Him by by the beauty of what we do and the beauty of the decoration and the money that we spend uh, is, isn't just sort of thrown away, but it is really you know, uh, an act of worship in and of itself to build in this way. Very cool. That's a nice, you know, thought that in all of these churches and places that have been built, you know, have that in mind. And um, do you um, happen to pray while you're working on your designs? Is that part of your you know, philosophy or approach? I'm sure there are probably monks out there who can pray eight hours a day, <laughs> um, but um, but I like to try to um, you know try to to, to to be in a good spiritual uh, frame of mind when I'm doing things. Um, but mostly it's, you know, it's 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 thinking about the theology and thinking about what we're trying to communicate mm-hmm. theologically through the architecture. So that's always the the primary focus of what I'm trying to do yeah. is that you know am I am I just trying to build something and get it done or am mm-hmm. I really trying to say something. And uh, and make you know through the craftsmanship of the of of the architecture itself yeah. uh, to be able to communicate those truths. And so some artists would, would would say you know kind of the art that they do is in and of itself sort of an act of prayer itself. Uh, yeah. And and then sometimes it it kind of does elevate itself to that when you know you kind of get into a, yeah. a zone when I'm doing drawings and paintings. Almost a meditation of sorts. Yeah. Correct. Okay. okay. Um, so what is your favorite thing about being an architect and being able to share your faith in the process doing these kinds of um, jobs for churches and shrines? The and... uh, happiness that I, that I get from it is when when I'm able to see that, that people really respond to what, what we've done. We've done. Mm-hmm. A lot of the work that I've done is um, renovations or restorations when we're looking at churches that were, you know, maybe built in the 60s or 70s that weren't exactly the most beautiful things in the world. But we've done things, beautify them, make them into a beautiful but also a holy place. Mm-hmm. And so when I, when, I, when I hear people say, you know, for instance, I had a project and a woman who was working there, she says, well, I wasn't really, um, I, I kind of doubted about what we were doing here, but mm-hmm. when I see what we did, I, I think it's just really beautiful and people will respond to it and to, to really sort of... Uh, take a place and, and really uh, make it into more of a fitting setting for uh, for people's prayer and their mm-hmm. devotions. And so I, I really love to be able to see that. Uh, it's always a satisfying sort of feeling to know that you have something that sort of can, can outlive you too. <laughs> um, that, uh, you know, my work, uh, it, you know, things can be very sort of passing, transitory, but the architecture yeah. itself is, is something that can last for a long time. <laughs> you know, when uh, when we see buildings and, and we know they're there, that generations before gave us a gift. Yeah, um, that, that's kind of a, a satisfying feeling. Yeah, I just went to Rome for the first time and saw all the architecture there, and it was not only beautiful, but it was like a history lesson. Every you know single place I went it was just like wow, <laughs> and you know the thought that all this like time and effort and love and care went into these buildings. It's nice to see that's being passed on still today. Right, absolutely. It's just it's something that. We, we we like to talk a lot about um, the environment and talking about sort of uh, uh, how much we waste on things. But we, we, we waste a lot of money a lot of times on buildings. And so when we build for the future and we build something really permanent, we really are giving a gift so that people in the future don't have to uh, – they don't have to put all, all sorts of energy and money and uh, you know, environmental damage into, into doing things. But if we have uh, something really permanent – 
uh, it lasts forever. You know, you, yeah. you, like you said, you went to Rome. There are churches there that are hundreds of years old, if not thousands of mm-hmm. years old. I mean, there are Roman buildings which are now churches that are you know two thousand years old, and they work just as well as they they did then. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's really it's really kind of neat to be able to do that, and that's what I always try to do. Is I I build traditionally. So, like, for instance, what we're doing out in New Mexico, we're doing these little shrines, and we're using traditional adobe techniques that the, uh, the Native Americans developed. That's pretty cool. And, um, and then we're adopted by the Spanish architecture there. And so we're building these things traditionally. We're not building them using high-tech new materials, but old materials that mm-hmm. uh, we hope will last for centuries. That's awesome. Um, is there anything else you'd like to, you know, end with? I'm glad to be here, and, and I'm always looking for opportunities to work with people on projects. I work on all sorts of things. Uh, it's sort of no job is too small for me, because every every church, I think, even the small churches, deserves to have something beauty, beautiful and uh, to have um, things that are spiritual. So. Um, Thank you so much for talking with me today, Eric. And for our listeners, if you want to see Eric's beautiful designs that include the rosary walk and crucifix he talked about, go to catholiccarol.com or pick up a copy of the August 22nd print issue, or you can go to his website at bootsmadesign.com.